on potential Emmy nominee Evan Stafford. And watch this video to the end to see how my Emmy campaign and everything involved with it started. I bet you're wondering who the hell am I, right? I'm an EDM singer-songwriter who's been pushing my music and message and the happiness that I get from music to the world, spreading that joy to the world. But enough with that hoo-ha shit. And I've been fucking doing anything possible to try to fucking get my fucking big break. Anything. Anything. And when you're an artist in 2019 trying to stand out, you better do something fucking big. Because there's so much competition. I'm gonna assume that you know exactly what winning an Emmy Award means and the honor and, you know, prestige that comes with that. The highest honors. I say one of the highest honors because it's one of four top honors in the music industry, or in the entertainment industry. There's the Emmy, which of course is for television. Everything that you see on, you know, television that's like in syndication. You have the Oscars, which is for movies. The Grammys, which is for music. And the Tonys, which is for Broadway. So, where exactly does the Emmy fit in all this? Well, the entertainment industry is one of the hardest industries to get into. I mean, no matter what aspect of it, whether you're a model, dancer, agent, think of it as like the like cool kids. Maybe like um, like the plastics in like Mean Girls, you know? How do we get cool with the cool kids? If you ever watch the movie Never Been Kissed, Drew Barrymore's brother will say that if you want to be cool, you just need one, one person to say that you're in and the rest of them will be too scared to question them. In this situation, the Emmys being that one person and the entertainment industry being the cool kids. If the Emmy gives us their seal of approval, basically, it will open a lot more doors for me in my music career. Because in this industry, you gotta get in any way you can. I mean, Cardi B had to strip, you know, Mariah Carey had to marry her manager. I mean, you do what you gotta do, sell drugs, whatever, you know what I mean, to get in this industry. So I was like, you know what, maybe this way will work. So even though I got it, you know, kind of all figured out, I was still going to have to work my ass off. Because I have a lot of things working against me. How the hell was I going to produce a series without any fucking money or, you know, any experience in, um, in, uh, in actually financing films? Now, obviously, I have no chance of breaking into television by creating my fucking own, you know, series because I'm not a... I'm not NBC or fucking ABC, you know? I'm not a network, I'm just a person. So, so for a show to even qualify to be a web series, the requirements is that it is a scripted show, so it has to be like a made up show that you, know, you, that you rehearse and do with actors, and then it has to be less than 15 minutes, but, no, but, but it has to be longer than two minutes long. And of course, it has to be of some type of uh, substance that's gonna be, you know, worthy of being nominated for the Emmy Award, which is the highest of the highest honors that you can receive. Again, how the fuck was I going to release a series to be considered for an Emmy Award? So at this point, it's September 2018. So I don't have anything really written. I kind of have an idea for kind of an angle that, that like I want to go by, but nothing really set in stone. But what I was able to do is I was at least able to get some of the requirements and some actual dates for when I would have to have this done by. So I got a date of May 31st, 2019. I needed to have six episodes, scripted episodes. I needed to have them to be at least over two minutes and under 15 minutes long. And they had to have premiered on the World Wide Web during primetime hours. So yeah, I had a lot of work to do.